Early in the week of March 8 through 14, 1993 there was talk of a big winter storm developing, but no one was expecting what would go down in history as the storm of the century. An early projection of a storm that has not formed yet. So with that said, we expect by 6 o'clock by, uh, well, right in the 6 o'clock Friday evening in the Gulf, this low pulls down some cold air, makes a quick move toward the coastline, and then zips in our direction, expecting that we could see some heavy gusty winds up to 75 miles per hour from this system on Saturday, also some snow. Now following this projected path, this is where the heaviest snowfall would be. Take it all the way from West Virginia up through Pennsylvania, west New York State and all the way up toward Maine. We find ourselves likely at this point in the moderate snowfall category. Too early to give you totals on this one. As a matter of fact, this is an early projection for this system and likely will modify it over the next 24 hours. But we wanted you to know what we know just so you can make your plans. The so-called storm of the century would start out as some light to moderate rain over the south central U.S. on the morning of Friday, March 12, 1993. Some mixing was occurring on the northern edge of the precipitation. Also some light to moderate snow was falling in the Texas Panhandle. By 10 a.m., light snow was falling in North Texas, parts of Oklahoma, Arkansas, Mississippi and northern Alabama. Over the Gulf there were some strong thunderstorms, with a few trying to make their way onto land. By Friday afternoon, light snow was falling from the Texas Panhandle over to northern Alabama and southern Tennessee, with rain falling south of that. By afternoon, strong thunderstorms were moving into southeastern Louisiana, showing signs that the storm was beginning to ramp up. Light to at times moderate snow was falling on the northwest side of the precipitation, but this would be nothing compared to what was coming later in the night. As evening approached areas like Jackson, Mississippi and Birmingham, Alabama would switch over to snow. Meteorologist James Spen was tracking this historic storm on that Friday night in Birmingham, Alabama. This is a current composite of all of the radars across the south, and you can see just about entirely snow now from uh, Tuscaloosa, Birmingham, and Anniston north. South of that, we have rain and very heavy precipitation in the Gulf. That will be coming across here tonight, and for that reason, we are still forecasting snow accumulations between 4 and 10 inches. Take a look at the scene outside now. The Doppler 6 Weather Center on Red Mountain out in front of our building. You can see what we have right now, and that's snow covering all of the grassy areas. And the snow is coming down now at a moderate rate. The current temperature dropping down to 32. That's our thermometer reading now. And Will Collins of our staff is now live out in the snow for a report on road conditions. Kevin? All right, James, thanks very much. We've been here for about 15 or 20 minutes. When we first got here on I-59 northbound at the 31st Street exit, the snow was not sticking to the ground and the grass, and now it is, and it's starting to accumulate very, very rapidly. The roads, as you can see me on I-59 behind me, just wet at this point, but very, very soon, especially on the sides of the roads. Birmingham to the northeast, we've got 6 to 16 inches on here for northeast Alabama. The folks really on up in the Appalachian Mountains here, they will be measuring this thing in terms of feet instead of inches. One to five inches, maybe as far south as Montgomery, and one inch all the way down into south central Alabama. Even flurries are possible tonight as far south as Mobile. Now, let's put the radar in motion. We've had light snow here all afternoon. I say light, actually moderate to heavy in some spots, but this is what we're concerned about. A huge mass of heavy rain down here in the Gulf with this storm energy center. It's moving inland right now. That will come right on through North Alabama during the night tonight, and that's when the snow will be very, very heavy. And as the snow gets heavy, the winds will be increasing. This is a uh, just a, what we call a, a bombogenesis type storm. It's going to explosively intensify. And uh, as it does that, moving on through here, we'll see these tremendous winds. And again, we're talking 50 mile per hour winds after midnight tonight, driving the snow. The center of the storm now is south of New Orleans, and this will be tracking through South Alabama. And as it rolls up the Atlantic seaboard tomorrow, those folks will see hurricane force winds. If you're going to try and go anywhere tomorrow, the eastern third of the country will be closed down. Right, windy, periods of heavy snow, blizzard conditions after midnight, a north wind at 25 to 45 miles per hour. By 10 p.m. the storm would start to crank over the southeast, producing severe thunderstorms over Florida and blizzard conditions in Mississippi and Alabama. By this point the snow was stretching all the way up through Tennessee, Kentucky and into West Virginia. As the calendar flipped over to March 13, Birmingham was in the middle of its worst winter storm on record, with numerous reports of thunder snow throughout the area. 
This was also causing several power outages in the state of Alabama. Good evening, everybody. I'm James Spann with a live update on this major winter storm. We'll take a few moments and talk about what's going on. The immediate concern, many of you right now with no electricity. Perhaps you're listening to us on your radio at 87.7. Uh, at this point, we cannot tell you when your power will be turned back on. The power company working as hard as they can to restore electricity. Uh, thousands of customers right now with no service because of this heavy, wet snow falling on trees and power lines. Winds are increasing, and as this major storm moves inland, we're talking blizzard conditions in Birmingham. In fact, we're approaching that right now. Thunder snowstorms all across the area. In fact, just about two minutes ago, we had just a huge lightning hit nearby with a large clap of thunder, something you'd expect on a summer day. That shows you how incredible this storm is. This will be probably the strongest winter storm on record in this country as it moves up the Atlantic coast. Kevin Collins now is out in the weather. Kevin, uh, tell us a bit about what's going on out there and uh, maybe some advice for people that have no electricity right now. All right, James, thanks very much. This is a rapidly deteriorating situation. If you are without power right now, we'll get in just a second some of the things that you can do to keep yourself warm and also keep yourself informed during the evening. But as I mentioned, the situation is getting worse. Snow is coming down harder by the minute. James mentioned about two minutes ago, if you're anywhere in the Birmingham area or either side of Red Mountain, you probably heard the thunder just as I was coming out here. I saw the lightning flash and then listened to the thunder echo down Red Mountain to the west for a good 10 to 15 seconds indicating probably one of the largest bolts of lightning certainly that I have ever seen. Now that lightning is going to cause more electrical problems as we see power lines going down, as we see transformers blowing up. Okay, Kevin, thank you very much. We are currently uh, updating our list of shelters that are being open for those of you with no electricity. If you feel the need to go to a shelter, just hang on with us for a few more moments. We'll give you an updated list. Uh, and Kevin, uh, as you watch Kevin, you saw the extreme winds up here. We just checked our anemometer. We've had a wind gust now to 37 miles per hour in the past couple of minutes. Wind chills are below zero. We are approaching blizzard conditions right now. So again, please leave your uh, television on, uh, your radio on 87.7. We're going to be on often. In fact, as soon, we're going to go back to continuous coverage on this winter storm that will be talked about for years and years to come. So what is turning out to be the greatest winter storm on record in this country is raging right now across the South. Uh, the National Meteorological Center in Washington is calling this an unprecedented life-threatening storm. Uh, quite frankly, I've never seen anything like this in terms of the central barometric pressure, the strength, and all of the things we're having right now. Just some examples of the oddities right now in Mobile. It is snowing heavily. In fact, they have a thunder snowstorm. We have thunder snowstorms in the Birmingham area because of the thick wet snow and the high wind. We have numerous, numerous reports of trees down. Thousands of people are currently without electricity. At last report, at least 20,000. And obviously, this will take a, a long time for the power company to work on. We cannot tell you when the power will be restored. Now, this is the center of the big storm located right here, just south of the Alabama Gulf Coast. We are in the sector where uh, heavy snow is very favorable. It continues to fall. In fact, we have Kevin Collins of our staff who is out in the snow. And uh, Kevin, it looks as though we are now approaching those blizzard conditions we've been talking about all night. Uh, we sure are, James. In fact, when you say in the snow, you're uh, almost right. I'm almost in the snow up to my knees and being blown over. As you can tell by the wind gust up here on Red Mountain, the wind is gusting to over 40 miles per hour. We've got anywhere from four to six inches of snow on the ground now across the Birmingham area. Now, with the wind blowing, that's going to create some interesting problems. Snow drifting. And, Jeff, if you can pan down and show you what's going on here right at the back door, of uh, channel six we've had the garage door the back door closed for better part of the evening and then you can see the snow drifting up against that door and that's going to cause that's about a foot right there now anywhere from one feet to two feet to even three feet in some spots near houses near walls any kind of thing that acts as a barrier to the wind you're going to get some snow drifting and that's going to cause even more problems let me talk a little bit about some flashes that you may be seeing in the sky a number of reports of lights in the sky that could be one of two things number one it could be lightning if it's a white flash it probably is lightning something called thunder snow something we're not used to here in the south and in fact across most of the country it's a fairly rare event indicating a very very strong dynamic system it's just like a summertime thunderstorm but with snow falling so a white flash in the sky does mean that you're seeing lightning outside 
That's going to cause some pro some power problems. As many as 20,000 people in the area without power now, that number will certainly go up through the evening. Another flash you might see if it has sort of a bluish green flash in the sky, that is likely a transformer blowing out somewhere in the area, and that just lends more problems to the power problems around the area. Okay, Kevin, hang on to that hat. And again, uh, our engineers are making a valiant effort to keep us on the air. If you are inside, I'm not so sure you know just how bad this storm is. While Kevin was outside watching the anemometer in the office here, we had a wind gust of 52. 52 miles per hour. Uh, the current temperature now at 29 degrees. That puts our wind chill values in the 20 below zero range. Uh, let's talk weather very quickly. Uh, I know that many of you are concerned right now. This is the, the brunt of the storm. We've been talking about this thing all week long. We started talking about it uh, um, late Monday and really emphasizing it Tuesday. This is the main part of the storm. Uh, between now and about 3 o'clock in the morning, northeast, a raging blizzard for the Atlantic coast. Now the problem is the wind will continue all day long. Uh, hits near the tower and we're flashing on and off the air. We are still uh, on the air, I think, as we speak. Uh, okay, we are on the air, but, but again, uh, even though the snow will taper off uh, toward the uh, dawn hours, the wind will continue all day. Wind chill values all day today will be in the 20 below zero range at times, and we're going to have snow and drifting snow. Even though the snow will stop falling from the sky, we could have what we call a ground blizzard. That's where you have just a whiteout based on the snow that's already there. Uh, snow accumulations in Birmingham, we probably have six, seven, maybe eight inches on the ground in spots. Uh, we're going to wind up with uh, amounts around one foot now, I think, in many areas. Some of the mountainous uh, folks, uh, mountainous locations northeast of Birmingham could receive up to 18 inches from this big storm. It's snowing all the way down to Mobile. Right now they have one inch on the ground. They have, they've had thunder snowstorms like we've had all night tonight. First time that's ever been seen in Mobile. A heavy snow warning now all the way through southwest Alabama. And a snow advisory uh, now in effect for parts of central Alabama. Now let's share a couple of other things about this big storm as we are still making efforts to stay on the air. We are on the air, I think. Uh, this is central Florida. Down in the warm sector of this storm, a violent tornado outbreak tonight. A line of severe thunderstorms now from right at DAB, that's Daytona Beach in Volusia County, running down through Orlando and the uh, Kissimmee, uh, Kissimmee areas, uh, then uh, approaching Fort Myers. Numerous tornadoes in here tonight. So far, at least... Good morning, everybody. It's a Saturday morning as this major winter storm continues across North Alabama. I'm James Spann. It looks like it's about uh, 3 6 Seven. We're glad you're with us. Many of you staying up with us throughout this uh, winter storm, listening for updates, and uh, uh, this has been one to talk about. Again, we've been looking at the maps and talking about this for days, but uh, now that it's here, it's uh, almost hard to describe. Blizzard conditions continue across much of North Alabama. We've seen winds gusting to 58 uh, miles per hour here. That happened uh, earlier this morning. The snow continues to fall. Snow will exceed one foot in many areas. And now for the first time, we have some video of what's been going on uh, out there. And uh, let's see, we have one of our photographers, I think, on the telephone with us right now. And uh, let's see, is this, uh, is this Jeff with me now? Jeff, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, uh, James. Jeff, uh, uh, we've got the raw tape in house. And what I'm going to do is just let you describe the pictures we're about to see, Darren. So if you can roll that video tape, uh, we'll take a look at it. And Jeff, I'll let you describe it. What are we looking at here? Okay, here we go. Uh, this is this was taken on uh, Montclair Road in uh, Mountain Brook, and there, these are power uh, power company Alabama Power Company crews trying to restore power to some some people and residents that you know are without power this, uh, this evening and early morning. Uh, what they had done was they had turned off this one line so that they could restore power to uh, Montclair Hospital. This is what the uh, Alabama uh, power people told us about the scene there. And they had turned it back on. No, it's falling. Uh, there was a lightning flash, some of that uh, that thunder snow that y'all have been talking about earlier. If you uh, watch closely, you can see some of it on there. Yeah, you know, th this is uh, very much, uh, it's almost like some of the hurricanes I've been in. We we've basically been inside uh, in a safe, warm place with electricity. and. We, we've glanced out the window at times, but uh, really we haven't felt the brunt of the storm, and uh, you've been out there in it. Uh, now, as I understand it, you, you, you could not get back up on Red Mountain, is that right? 
Yeah, uh, I tried to get up there. I'm in my four-wheel drive. I tried to get up on Red Mountain, uh, you know, to deliver this tape up there and everything and, and to get a little dry because, to tell you the truth, I'm sopping wet right now. But um, I couldn't get up there, so I had to go to our, uh, our location where we can feed the tape back uh, via microwave. But, um, yeah, it was Red Mountain. You know, there was nobody around. There was no street lights, no nothing. And I had the window down. Uh, in the car, and I could hear trees popping in the distance, you know, and I thought at any moment, you know, a tree was going to crash in front of the truck or on, on the truck or whatever, and I drove up on a, on a tree that had just fallen, and uh, I could not get around it because there was a huge ravine on one side and then, uh, a, a, you know, a smaller ditch on the other, and it was, the tree was actually, you know, blocking the road. I even tried to go over the tree and, and could not go over it, and so I had to back, back up the hill, and it was a pretty steep hill, and, um, uh, for a good long while there, I didn't know if I was going to get out of that or not. Do you notice a lot of neighborhoods with no power? What you would do, uh, right there, as you just saw, there was a flash of that uh, lightning. But what you would do, you would, I would drive through neighborhoods, and, uh, you know, the, the lightning would actually, it actually would kind of like strike, like during a thunderstorm during the summertime. But you wouldn't see the lightning. You would just hear, the, you, there was this, you know, incredible flash that turned it into daytime almost. And then you would see like street lights and people's lights in their houses will flash and they would go dark for a second. The whole area would go dark. You couldn't see anything. And um, and then all of a sudden the lights would come back on. So, you know, there are a lot of areas that are dark. Uh, you know, I think the guys, you know, from the Alabama Power are out there trying to restore as much as they can. By 4 a.m. the storm was still hitting Alabama with strong winds and heavy snow. The snow had reached the Gulf Coast and was falling on the beaches in Alabama and Florida. And James Spann was still tracking the storm in Birmingham. That is the current live wind here atop Red Mountain. You can see the numbers there changing. That's the wind in miles per hour. Let me show you the peak wind value, 58 miles per hour at 147 this morning. Now, we've had gusts on a regular basis in excess of 40. Uh, that's the current temperature there, 25 degrees. Here at uh, Channel 6 on Red Mountain, uh, we just spoke uh, with uh, one of the observers out at the Birmingham airport, and I uh, believe he has 26 degrees on his thermometer. There's the barometer still falling, 29.43. As this storm uh, deepens rapidly, uh, we're, we're still getting a pressure fall. By Saturday morning, the storm was starting to wind down in Alabama, but eastern Tennessee and other parts of the Appalachians were getting hit with extremely heavy snow coming down at 3 to 4 inches per hour. Meanwhile the snow was just beginning to fall in New York City, where Al Roker and Sam Champion were tracking the storm. The storm is now being felt. We have live team coverage, starting with Al Roker, who's tracking the storm's movements at this point. Al. Well, Bill, I'll tell you, this storm is starting to uh, really intensify. It is still down in Georgia, so this will give you an idea of what kind of a storm we are talking about. We are feeling the effects of it, and the storm is still down in Georgia. It's not even close to us yet. So uh, we are seeing winds now gusting out of the northeast over 25 miles per hour at Central Park, and we are looking for the worst to just really start getting wound up in the next hour or two. Uh, right now, heavy snow, as McGee mentioned, and a temperature of 30 degrees. Take a look at our Saturday satellite view and you can see this system winding itself up and starting to work its way into the area and the fact of the matter is what we are looking at is again uh, the just the, the the residual parts of the storm up ahead of it we are not even at the brunt of the storm yet now if we could take a look at our live doppler radar and we'll show you that again we are seeing some pretty decent amounts of snow falling in the area because radar really doesn't reflect snow all that well and when you start to see the darker green and the yellow that's the more moderate snow you know it is going pretty good to beat the band out there and what we are seeing with our doppler radar we're the only station in town that has a live radar let alone a doppler radar the doppler radar will see the winds and as those winds pick up you're going to start to see purple on that radar and that'll show where the most likelihood of blizzard like conditions are going to be now as we take a look right now you're going to see what we see as the track of this storm by noon it'll be up over North Carolina will be looking at heavy snow possibly falling at the rate of two to three inches per hour winds will be up to about 35 miles per hour and at that point we're going to start to see some coastal flooding now for six o'clock north and west very heavy 
snow. Along the coast, as warmer air starts to get work in closer to the coast, a mix of snow and rain, maybe even some thunderstorms. Winds up to 70 miles per hour sustained, coastal flooding, but we could have gusts of up to 85 miles per hour or more by 10 o'clock tonight over the Delmarva Peninsula. Again, a mix of rain and snow along the coast. We think north and west, heavy snow, northeasterly winds, 40 to 70 miles per hour, major beach erosion occurring by that time. And again, if this storm moves a little further out to the east, we won't see that change over to snow and rain, and the entire viewing area will be looking at major problems. Now again, 10 a.m. Sunday, storms up around Maine. Backside of the storm, winds are coming out of the northwest. Much colder air. So we're not done yet. Snow squalls, additional accumulations, winds out of the northwest, 30 to 60 miles per hour, temperatures falling through the 20s toward the teens by tomorrow night, wind chills 15 to 30 below. And so again, because we are in a blizzard condition, or will be later on this afternoon, some safety tips for you at home. Stay inside. Don't go out because there's no, unless it's an emergency, there's no reason to. Make sure you got your flashlights, fresh batteries, extra batteries for your uh, radios, your battery-operated televisions. Bring in any loose objects that are outside on the patio of the backyard. They become projectiles and winds of 60 miles per hour. Make sure you've got extra food, bottled water. If you live in a, a place with a well and you lose your power, you're not going to have any water. If you lose your heat, close off rooms to conserve heat. Cover the windows to make sure you don't get any drafts coming in. If you have ventured out and you get stranded in a vehicle, stay inside your car. Run your motor at least uh, once every t uh, uh, 10 minutes per hour to keep the heat going. But open a window a little to let in fresh air. Make sure your exhaust isn't blocked by snow to avoid carbon monoxide poisoning. And exercise. Move your arms, your legs, your fingers and toes. Keep that circulation going so you're not dealing with frostbite. So, blizzard warnings in effect. A blizzard means You've got a sustained wind of 35 miles per hour or more. Visibility due to the blowing and the falling snow, under a quarter of a mile. What we're looking for by 7 o'clock tonight, before it changes over to rain and snow along the coast, 8 to 12 inches of snow. Coastal sections, again, 8 to 12 inches of snow. Eastern end of Long Island, eastern Connecticut, 6 to 10 inches. North and west, 10 to 15 inches. Northwestern New Jersey, Rockland, Westchester, Putnam, Dutchess, Orange County. Central and southern New Jersey, 6 to 10 inches. And as you get further south, South, four to six inches. Now, with the strong winds, coastal flood warnings in effect. High tide, Seabright, New Jersey, about 11.06. The battery, 12.29. Rye, New York, 3.15. Tides are going to be four to six feet above normal. And so, with those strong winds, 60, 70 mile per hour, what we are looking at is major beach erosion and coastal flooding. So we've got a two-pronged attack here. We have lots of snow and we have lots of wind. And both of these are going to cause large amounts of damage. Things it's easy to do when you watch this storm this morning is say, okay, I see the snow. It's not that bad. It's blowing around a little bit. I can see out my window. I can get out the driveway. I can go to the store. I can head to the gun show. I can do, you know, whatever other stories we've heard this morning. But you need to know that we're just now getting into some stronger winds. And this afternoon, it's even going to get worse. We've had 60, 63 mile per hour wind gusts reported along our coastlines now. We're getting 50 mile per hour guns, uh, uh, wind gusts inland. Uh, we're also uh, experiencing 70 mile per hour wind gusts in Charleston, North Carolina, around the system, up to 99 mile per hour wind gusts around the low itself, which is still off the South Carolina shoreline and moving north. So it, it, with all that said, just know that it will get worse this afternoon. Don't look out the window now and, and think that it's going to be okay because it's not going to be. You need to settle in right now. You've had time to make your plans. Settle in and stay with us. Let's show you the latest radar imagery. We'll show you exactly what's going on in our area. And it's pretty easy to see that we're covered up with moisture. Heavier bands of moisture, even in the darker shades of green to the southern areas of New Jersey, also around the Delmarva Peninsula. And believe it or not, you're picking up yellow, which is incredibly heavy snow falling at the rate of two to three inches per hour and with these winds you know it's that horizontal snow that is blowing sideways that tends to stick on road signs even not just on flat surfaces that is all moving up in our direction now in some areas are reporting some rain down along the very immediate coastline but most of this is falling in the form of snow and we need to prepare for a big heavy snow event so we've upped those totals now we'll show you the system exactly where it is now as it sits off the uh, Georgia South Carolina shoreline you can see the area of low pressure that's spending some snow, certainly well inland. There are blizzard warnings out all over the eastern seaboard for today into tonight. Heavy thunderstorms in Florida. We again have 70 mile per hour gusts around Charleston. Now areas that are not used to seeing snow, Birmingham, Alabama is getting snow and not just a little snow. 
13 inches of snow on the ground now in Birmingham. Chattanooga, Tennessee, another 13 inches of snow there. So as we watch this system move to the north, by Sunday morning, it's already well, well, sitting right on top of us practically. We're amending the path now to say that it moves over Long Island. And we were saying that it crosses the city before. Now, why is this important? The farther east it goes, the more cold air is allowed to be pulled to the coastline. And that means the more snow we're likely to see and the less that's likely to change over. Speaking of changeover, here's what we think is probably going to happen to this. Snow, ice to rain in the darkest shaded blue areas, which means Long Island and the South Jersey shoreline, yes, it's likely there will be a period of time that we think now it'll be short, just a few hours coming late this afternoon, that you will see a little ice and a little bit of rain. However, from the city, actually even, uh, well, you know, you get outside to Brooklyn and Queens and all those areas just outside of town. You work north to Rye, Westchester, also toward uh, Fairfield County in Connecticut, that you'll see snow changing over to ice, and that's going to be pretty rough in itself, because on top of the snow, you're going to see a coating of ice. Ice is going to hit power lines. We're then going to have transformers blowing as well as these transformers get covered with ice for a period of a couple of hours. There's going to be a lot of power outages with this, and at some points, the ice will probably be worse for us than the snow is. Inland areas will see mostly snow, and you'll watch it accumulate and accumulate and pile up on the ground. We're talking about the possibility of maybe three feet of snow for the Poconos, Catskills, areas like that. I wouldn't call it out of the question for 12 to 36 inches of snow in northern suburbs. Now, in town, we've been kind of watching this, and last night we were saying 12 inches of snow in town. This morning we were wondering, well, are we right? Are we not right? Will it be a little less? Will the changeover knock some of those snowfall totals down? At this time, it appears that no, it won't. The changeover really won't be for that extended period of time. We're looking at maybe an hour to two hours of a changeover to rain later on this afternoon. So we push those snowfall totals back up to a foot and more for town. Six to 12 inches likely out on the island where, in fact, when that changeover occurs, the rain and the ice will beat down some of the snow that's accumulated on the ground. By 10 a.m., West Virginia was getting absolutely destroyed with snow and it was still nowhere near done. Also, New York was beginning to see it ramp up a bit. Spread high winds now starting to work their way into the area. Now, this is the track of the storm. This is the way we see it right now. By uh, It's going to come right across uh, probably eastern Long Island and on into Boston. And so what that means is there's going to be heavier snow north and west of the city. We are getting a mix of some frozen precips, some sleet, and some frozen rain in there, but it's still going to stay mostly snow. I mean, we've got, we can hear it hitting and pebbling on the bee on the uh, window here, but for the most part, we're seeing snow falling. So we do have snow over our area. A mix of uh, frozen precipitation is trying to work its way into the region, and there is rain down in uh, southern and southeastern New Jersey. So we do have a blizzard warning in effect now for northwestern uh, for until tonight really uh, for the entire tri-state region one to three feet of snow northwestern New Jersey Rockland Westchester Putnam Dutchess and Orange counties and points north also in uh, the northern third of Connecticut we have uh, 12 to 20 inches of snow for western New Jersey central New Jersey uh, New York City's five boroughs western Long Island and most of the uh, Connecticut coastline then 10 to 15 inches the eastern half of Long Island and also for uh, Sam South Central New Jersey, six to ten inches of snow in uh, in southern New Jersey, and again, uh, we're looking at high tides for tomorrow morning. Coastal flood warnings are in effect. As it moved into and through the afternoon hours, the storm pushed its way up into the northeast, where heavy snow was falling, as well as many reports of thunder snow. Even by 7 p.m. on Saturday, the snow was still falling down in Georgia and stretched all the way up to Maine and into Canada. Areas on the immediate coast were seeing some rainfall, though as the warm air that the system was pulling off the Atlantic, was increasing temperatures and changing the snow terrain. As the night continued the Appalachian chain would continue to see snowfall, all the way down to northern Georgia. Areas like Boston would switch over to rain, but interior sections of the northeast would remain all snow. As the sun came up on Sunday morning, just light to moderate snow was falling in the northeast, as the storm was nearing its end in the United States. I now want to get into snowfall totals for this storm, first I will start with the southern areas, and just look at how heavy the amounts were. Areas in the Appalachians picked up over 3 feet of snow. And most areas surrounding them had at least over 2 feet. Parts of North Georgia and northeastern Alabama had over 18 inches on the ground. Birmingham where we watched James Spann throughout Friday night had over 12 inches. Atlanta was around 4 to 5 inches. Even Mobile, Gulf Shores and the Florida Panhandle had anywhere from 1 to 3 inches of snow. 
Now let's look at the Northeast, areas like Washington DC, Philadelphia, and New York City received anywhere from 12 to 18 inches. But the interior areas where it remained all snow were hit the worst, with widespread totals of 2 feet or more from western Virginia up to Vermont. One of those areas was Albany, New York where they piled up 27 inches of powder. Syracuse and Burlington had over 3 feet of snow, with Syracuse picking up exactly 43 inches of snow. Some areas in the Appalachians had as much as 5 feet of snow. The top wind gust was in Mount Washington, New Hampshire at 144 miles per hour. Boston even gusted as high as 81, some areas in the Appalachians gusted over 100 miles per hour as well, taking the word blizzard to a whole different level. And the sea level pressure reached as low as 961 millibars in White Plains, New York. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe and leave a comment if you have another weather event you would like me to make a video on.